Here's our, equa our inequality. x plus 2 times the quantity, negative x plus 4, minus 3 times the quantity, x plus 5, is less than negative 4. As if it were an equation, we'd remove these parentheses using the distributive property. x minus 2x plus 8 minus 3x minus 15 is less than negative 4. Let's combine some terms now. x minus 2x minus 3x, negative 4x, and 8 minus 15, negative 7, less than negative 4. Let's add 7 to both sides. Negative 4x is less than adding 7 to both sides, we'd get uh, 3. And then dividing both sides by negative 4 will turn the inequality around and give us our answer of negative 3 fourths. The solutions to such an inequality may be supported graphically in a similar manner to that of linear equations. Let's do the intersection of graphs method on this particular problem. We'll go to our graphing calculator, and in the Y1 menu, we'll place the left side. X plus 2 times negative X plus 4 minus 3 times x plus 5, and then y2 will simply be negative 4. Zoom 6. Now, in this case, what we are looking for is a place where one graph is below the other. We want y1 to be below less than negative 4. We'll first find the intersection point, intersect, first curve, second curve, guess, and we see that that is negative 0.75. That's the negative 3 fourths solution, part of the solution we had before. Now you'll notice that if we trace y1, that it is below the line y equals negative 4 to the right. That confirms that x must be larger than negative 3 fourths. We can also write our answer in interval notation. And we can do that in this way. Parentheses, negative 3 fourths, infinity. We can also confirm our solution using the x-intercept method. Let's go to our graphing calculator. We have to turn off y1 and y2, and then go to y3. We use our VARES menu to put in y1 minus y2. VARES, y VARES function, y1 minus VARES, y VARES function, y2. Now we can graph y3. Find the x-intercept. Okay. 0. Uh, our left bound we might put in as uh, negative 2. Right bound could even be 0. Our guess could be negative 1. And it tells us that that point is negative 0.75 or negative 3 fourths. Now if we trace, what we're looking at now is places where our y1 minus y2 is below 0. And again, we see 
that the solution would be anything from negative 0.375 up to infinity all the way to the right. It's important to understand that the calculator does not show you whether or not the endpoints of an interval is a member of the solution set to the inequality. Here's how that's done. If it's in less than or equal to or greater than or equal to inequality, then we'll include the intercept. And we would, in interval notation, use square brackets on each end. We never use square brackets at infinity because you can never actually get to infinity. If it's a strictly less than or a strictly greater than zero function, then the intercept is excluded. And again, we will use the parentheses instead. Now we'll look at another problem. We'll get it started and then have you finish the problem itself. Solve the inequality negative one half x plus 0.7x is less than or equal to 5. The first thing we'd want to do is clear the fractions and decimals. And we can do that by multiplying both sides by 10. This will become negative 5x plus 7x is less than or equal to 50. Now stop the tape and complete the analytic solution. Write your answer in interval notation. Here's the rest of the solution. Combining like terms, 2x is less than or equal to 50. Dividing both sides by 2, x is less than or equal to 25. If x is less than or equal to 25, the interval solution would be everything from negative infinity up to and including 25. And so we'll put a square bracket on the end of that problem. Let's try another problem for you to solve on your own. This problem should be solved using the x-intercept method with y1, y2, and y3 typed into your calculator as shown. Since your results will be irrational, you'll have to round your endpoints off to the nearest hundredth. Turn the tape back on to see the solution. To solve this inequality using the x-intercept method, we'll go to our graphing calculator and enter the left side in y1. 2.3 pi plus the cube root of 7. We'll enter the, left si the right side in y2. 0.6 pi x minus the square root of 21. We'll turn y2 and y1 off. We already have entered the y1 minus y2 in the y3 menu as we've done before. Now we'll graph. We'll find the, the zero, second calc zero, where the left bound looks like it's about maybe six, and the right bound is maybe eight. And then we'll make a guess. So our solution here is that from the point 7.28, and we want to know where that's less than zero, which is to the right, our solution would be from 
7.28 to infinity.